Hello and welcome to another video tutorial about FreeCAD. In this video tutorial we are going to learn how to position solids in 3D space. We will therefore learn how to use the Edit Alignment tool. We will learn how to use Placement on solids and we will learn that there is a difference between solids coming from the part workbench and solids coming from a part design workbench. We will also learn about the move and rotate tool from a draft workbench and how to use them and uh, what workflow to apply. The version of FreeCAD I'm using here is the 0.15 stable release on a Windows 7 64-bit system. So the first tool we will learn about is the Edit Alignment tool. The Edit Alignment tool is used to align two faces of different solids in 3D space. Uh, first you will choose the fixed solid and then you will choose the movable solid and then you will choose your three points on your fixed solid and your three points for alignment on your movable solid. So first I have set up here two shapes by inserting two cubes and doing a boolean cut. You can also do this with shapes coming from a part design workbench. There is no restrictions with the edit alignment tool like there is with the move and rotate and the placement tool. We will learn about the restrictions by, uh, for using them later on. But as I said, for the edit alignment tools there are no restrictions. So first we have to choose our fixed object and then we have to press Ctrl to do a multi-select, we will select then our movable object. Then we will select the Edit Alignment tool and as you can see here you just got two uh, windows here, one with a fixed object I did select first and one with a movable object I did select as a second object. When doing a right click you get a special menu. Um, you can, after choosing some points, you can align your two objects. Of course, at the moment, this is grayed out because I haven't selected some points. You can remove the last point selected from your list. You can cancel the whole uh, command or you can synchronize the views. So now I'm going to uh, to um, select my three points for alignment on my fixed object and then my three points for alignment on the movable object and then I will align both parts. For choosing points to align you can either choose as you can see here a corner point or a point on a face. As I said, we will choose up to three points on the fixed object and up to three points on the movable object. Point one on the movable object will be aligned with point one on the fixed object and point two on the movable object will be aligned with point two on the fixed object and so on. For points, you can either choose like I will do here corner points or you can just choose points lying somewhere on the face. So for first alignment point I will choose this one here. As you can see FreeCAD is showing that the selection was successful. So as second point I will choose this corner point here and as third point I will choose this corner point here. Okay. So now we have chosen our three points on the fixed object. Now we will choose our three points on the movable object. 
first point on the movable object, I want to be this corner point here. Now, second point on the movable object should be this point here. And third point on the movable object should be this point here. That's it. We have chosen all three points in this case. Now I will do a right click and I will choose a line. And as you can see, the puzzle is finished. We have aligned uh, those two parts. The Edit Alignment tool is for aligning two faces in 3D space. Uh, but that's the only purpose it is uh, useful for. Let's have a look at the placement and the move and rotate commands. With previous lessons, like for example the wiffle ball or the heart-shaped ashtray, we already used placements on sketches to move them in 3D space. We can also use placement on complete solids. But as I said before, we have to distinguish between solids created with a part workbench and solids created with a part design workbench. Let's look at an example. Let's close this file here. Let's create a new file. And let's create a door, uh, one time using the part workbench, showing the workflow for different commands, and one time using the part design workbench, showing the different workflow of uh, the move, rotate, and placement commands. So let's begin with the example created with the part workbench. Let's switch to the part workbench, let's insert a cube, and let's change with the data uh, tab the properties of the cube. Let's choose a length of 500 millimeters. Let's choose a depth of, uh, let's say, 50 millimeters. And let's choose a 8 of 2,000 millimeters. So that is, at the moment, our door. As I said, we have a length of 500 millimeters, a width of 50 millimeters, and a height of 2000 millimeters. Okay, so let's deselect the cube now. Let's insert a cylinder. Let's change the properties of the cylinder by giving it a radius of 100 millimeters and an height of 50 millimeters. As you can see here, we are, will now already apply placement to the cylinder as a solid. So I'm clicking here on these three points of the placement uh, tab and let's apply an incremental placement. Let's use the X axis and uh, let's do a rotation around the x-axis by minus 90 degrees. Let's also apply 250 millimeter in x direction and 1600 in z direction. Let's click on OK. Let's deselect everything. Then we select our cube and we also select our cylinder and apply a boolean cut. And now we have our door here, with a little hole to uh, have an idea what's going on behind the door. So now, as you could already see, when uh, also inserting our axis cross to get an idea where our uh, origin is in um, the file, and switching to wireframe mode to uh, see a little bit better what is going on now. Uh, as you can see, when I click on the whole solid and apply placement to the solid, let's say an incremental one, I can change 
uh, the translation uh, values by let's say in x direction 500 millimeters and as you can see the door did just move by the entered value. I can also use this placement tab to get a rotation on the object. So I will click on here, I will apply an incremental change and if I do use the Z axis here, let's say we will apply an angle of 45 degrees, which does look like here on the screen. We have as center the origin. Remember we still use solid uh, created with a part workbench. Okay, if we use a different center, remember that we applied an eight, uh, um, a width of 500 millimeters to the door and an, an eight in that direction of 50 millimeters. So the y value should be 50 millimeters and the x value should be 500 millimeters. So the center of a rotation is no more the origin, but the center is this corner here. And if we do now a rotation of 45 degrees, we just did a rotation around the new center here. So this is what these values are for. Now let's have a look at the move and rotate command from a draft workbench and how to use them on a solid uh, created with a part workbench. So let's switch to the part uh, to the draft workbench. And uh, with the move and the rotate command we have two possibilities concerning the workflow. We can first choose the solid we want to move or rotate and then apply the command or we can apply the command and then choose the solid which we want to move or rotate. I myself prefer the first alternative by first choosing the solid and then choosing to move or rotate the solid. So I choose the solid here and when I choose the command here I have options like continue and copy which I can use but this time I will use just the snap modes which are here and as you can see you can either completely uh, unlock them or lock them and you can uh, snap to midpoints to uh, uh, perpendicular points and uh, to endpoints and uh, to uh, angles, meaning some sort of quadrants of circles to circles and a little uh, things more. So in this case it is advisable to only use the snap modes you really need because sometimes you may be facing situations where the snap modes will interfere with, with each other. So I'm using just the endpoints and as you can see here if I'm nearing this endpoint here in the right upper no in the right lower corner of the icon there will appear the symbol that uh, I just uh, want to snap to the endpoint of these lines. So if I click on here and click somewhere here in 3D space, maybe another endpoint or midpoint on another object or things like that, the door will move. Basically the same is the rotate command. So I can select the solid which we want to rotate and then I click on the rotate command and then let's say we want to rotate around this endpoint here. We want to um, rotate this endpoint here and hey, wait a minute. 
It is a complete 3D command, so we can rotate in 3D space, but normally we don't want to rotate in 3D space, we just want to rotate in 2D space. So how can we do that? Let's hit the escape key and do some thinking. The draft, com uh, the draft workbench also allows us to restrict uh, uh, the work plane to a chosen planar face or to one of the three main planes. The three main planes are the XY plane, the XZ plane and the YZ plane. So let's try once more using the rotate command. In a lot of cases you have two possibilities to restrain the work plane. The first idea would be to use the snap mode. As you can see the last icon here will restrict the working plane to a previously chosen face. So if I choose for example this face here and apply the snap mode here, everything I will do now with operations like move or rotate will be restricted to this plane here. In this case we, we don't uh, want to have a Z coordinate if we restrain uh, operations to this face here. We can also use this button in the upper left corner. If we click on the button with nothing selected, we will get this dialog here asking for restriction to one of the three main planes, like the view. Uh, is, is set but perpendicular to the current view and we have an auto uh, restraining. We can also insert an offset value and on the other hand if we pre-select a face and then click on the button the work plane is restricted to this face here. So if I apply now to this selected solid my rotate command and I still choose this point as center of rotation and this point as first reference as you can see now I'm doing a 2D rotation. So that's all there is basically to uh, know about the move and rotate command from a draft workbench and how to use them on solids being created with a part workbench. With a part design workbench there is a little bit different workflow which I'm going to show now. Okay so let's first turn off the restraining of the work plane to the face make sure nothing is selected in the draft workbench and do a click on this button here in the left upper corner and then choosing order uh, will um, decent, uh, will, will toggle off uh, the restraining of the work uh, plane in draft workbench. So let's insert now a new document Let's switch to the part design workbench. Let's insert a new sketch, this time on the XZ plane. Let's create a rectangle. Let's choose this lower line here, giving it a horizontal dimension constraint of 500 millimeters. Let's choose one of the vertical lines and apply a vertical dimensional constraint of 2000 millimeters. Let's close the sketch. Let's do a pet operation. Let's uh, activate symmetric to plane and let's choose 50 millimeters as value to be applied. Okay, 
So if I change now to Axiometric View, save it all, we have our door here. So I'm selecting now this uh, face here. I apply a new sketch on the face. I will insert a circle. This time I will not bother with constraints since I only want to have a demonstration object. I'm closing the sketch. I do a pocket operation through all. And we are done with our door and we have two uh, features here in the uh, tree view of uh, part design workbench. Now let's switch to the wireframe view mode and let's toggle our axis cross once again to get a better view of what is going on. And when applying placement or move and rotate to an object created with a part design workbench, we are not able to apply the changes to the solid itself. We need to apply the changes to the first sketch of the object used. Remember what we did when modeling the wiffle ball or the heart shaped ashtray, for example? We used these tricks. Okay, so as you can see, if I click on Pocket here, the placement option is grayed out. I can't use it. The same is with Pad. As you can see here, placement is grayed out. But if I click on the first sketch used, I can use placement uh, on the first sketch. Don't use placement on sketches which are not the first sketch of your part design object. This will not work. So now if I select the sketch and apply a translation in X direction of 500 millimeters, if I click on apply, the door will move in this direction. If I also do a rotation, let's say I apply an incremental change and the center of the rotation should be the origin. Okay, so we will choose then the Z axis and we will apply a rotation of 45 degrees. We click on apply and the door just did rotate around 40 degrees in regard to the origin. So if we click on OK, if we click two times on undo and one time on recompute, uh, FreeCAD just undid this rotational operation. So what about using placement with a rotation not being the origin, but being another point. Okay, for this operation, we need to select the first sketch. We select our placement and we will apply an incremental change. The center of the rotation, as we have to uh, use a center of rotation in regard to the sketch. Let's try to use the end point of our sketch here. So the center of rotation is, remember, the door has a dimensional constraint of 500 millimeters in this direction. We moved it by 500 millimeters. So we need to apply a value of 1000 millimeters to the center of rotation in X direction. And now we want to rotate around the Z axis or equivalent. And we will use an angle of 45 degrees. We click on apply. And the door did just move 
by 45 degrees, mathematically spoken positive, so counterclockwise, around the z-axis. The same as with placement applies to uh, the move and rotate commands of the draft workbench, which I'm going to show now. So for the move and rotate command, let's switch to draft workbench, having uh, the part design model some sort of resetted, so it is now back in our origin and uh, back in uh, the basic uh, orientation. So let's first select our sketch we want to move and then let's select uh, toggle visibility so that we are able to snap to points. We will use the end point. We also could use for demonstration purposes, this time the midpoint of a line or an edge, in this uh, case a line of a sketch. So let's select the sketch we want to move, let's select the move command and when moving the cursor near the midpoint here, the midpoint gets highlighted and let's do a click and we can move our object in any direction we like. And we can use other snap points to snap to other points on our objects or other sketches, depending on uh, the other object if it is a part design or part object. So if I click uh, somewhere here in 3D space, the part design object just has been moved. OK, I will undo this operation. I will recompute everything. And with rotation, it is the same. Like I have shown with uh, the door coming from the part workbench, just that we do the rotation not with the solid, we do a rotation with the sketch itself. So if I select this top face, if I click on this button here to restrain the work plane to this face here, if I select the sketch and if I do a rotate command, I am able to do, for example, a rotation around the endpoint here as the center of move of the rotation. And I will use this endpoint here, and as you can see, If I click on Recompute, the door has moved. Let's do another rotation. By selecting the sketch, we still have the work uh, plane restricted to this face here. And we will do a rotation, selecting this time the midpoint here as center of rotation and selecting the midpoint of this edge here. And as you can see, you can also do a rotation like this. If you click on Recompute, a sketch and the pad and the pocket operation will all be recomputed. So these are the basic rules which apply to a uh, different object. And now let's finally start with modeling our bird feeder. So within the draft workbench, we make sure that we click on this button in the upper left corner to toggle off the restraining of the work plane by clicking on the button automatic. And let's start modeling by switching to a part workbench and inserting a new document. And then we will insert a cube and we will change the properties of the cube to have a length of 200 millimeters, to have a width of 260 millimeters and an 8 of 18 
millimeters. We change to axometric view and fit all. And this is the base plate. Since we will move and rotate the solids around, with this assembly it is not of much importance where we have our origin. There are some assemblies with where it uh, will be of maybe little importance where the origin is. Maybe you like to rename your different solids to keep a better overview of everything. So we select the cube, do a right click and choose rename which was the last point here on the menu and maybe we will like to name it base plate. Okay. So the next thing is to look for the two side plates. So let's insert a cube again and this time we will apply to the cube a length of 18 mm, a width of 260 mm and an eighth of 30 mm. As you can see the dimensions are correct, but the position is not. So let's move to the draft workbench. Let's select the cube. Let's select the move command and make sure that in best case only endpoints is selected. So let's move. Let's make sure that we select this endpoint here and this endpoint here. And here we did move the solid correctly. So let's rename this solid to side plate. Okay. And uh, now let's select the side plate. And since we want to have also side plate here, which should be identical to this one, we could use uh, the command clone from a draft workbench. It does do a clone of a selected object. And if you apply changes to the basic shape, of uh, the um, base solid, the clone will also inherit these changements. So let's choose now the clone, which has the same dimensions and the same position in 3D space at the moment of cloning, when uh, the, let's call it the mother object when we will apply also the move command by selecting this corner endpoint here and this corner endpoint here. Often it is easier to go to wireframe mode to be better able to catch the endpoints or midpoints of lines or something like that. So now we did uh, these three solids of the base and now we need to uh, model the front and the back side of our base. So for the front plate let's do something with part design. So let's first choose these three solids, do a right click and toggle the visibility. Let's click an empty space to deselect everything. Let's switch to Part Design Workbench. Let's apply a new sketch to the X Z plane. Let's draw a rectangle. And let's apply constraints. Let's apply a constraint of 300 mm horizontal. And let's apply a constraint of 30 millimeters 
vertically. Now let's draw two lines. And uh, one horizontal one and one vertical one. So let's apply a symmetry constraint with this point here and this line here. And let's apply a symmetry constraint here. Let's switch both lines to uh, construction geometry to construction mode. Let's also apply a symmetry here. And then we will insert two circles. with a midpoint being on this middle line here. Let's also apply a symmetry to the two midpoints of the circles and this uh, line here, this vertical construction line. So let's apply symmetry. Then let's apply a horizontal dimensional constraint of 270 millimeters. Let's apply equality to both circles regarding the radius and let's apply a radius of 5 millimeters. Let's close the sketch and then we will do our padding. So let's select the sketch, do the pad operation pad length is 18 millimeters and it is symmetric to plane. We choose OK. And now we toggle the visibility of a base plate. And as you can see here, the position is not correct. So if we toggle the visibility of a sketch, no, here we go. If we go to the draft workbench, select the sketch, and we deselect the endpoints and select the midpoints, we want to do a move. We want to do a move of this line. Uh, uh, of a sketch in regard to the midpoint of this element here and we want to uh, have the midpoint of this sketch line here being identical with the midpoint of this uh, edge here. So now we have to select the sketch again and we have to apply an incremental placement in Y direction of, we just padded 18 millimeters, so we have to apply uh, an incremental translation change of minus 9 millimeter. We apply a change here, and here we go. Now everything is okay. So let's rename the pad. And let's say front plate. OK. So let's make a clone of a front plate being in the draft workbench. And let's move the clone around. The clone does behave like an object coming from the part workbench. So it has not the restriction, since it has no sketches, you cannot move the sketches. You can move the whole solid. So
So let's apply our move command. Let's choose the midpoint of this corner uh, edge being on the midpoint here of this corner edge. So everything is now okay. We switch uh, we toggle the visibility off of the sketch. And now we will insert two metal rods for the birds to sit on. So let's insert um, with in the part workbench our cylinder and let's switch to wireframe mode to see where the cylinder is. Okay, the cylinder is here and we need a length for the cylinder of 260 plus 18 plus 18 millimeters. So this is 296 millimeters as a length or in this case V8 296. Let's have it a radius of 5 millimeters. Let's apply an incremental change. I will do a rotational placement around the X axis of minus 90 degrees. Okay. So now I will uh, make sure that the cylinder is selected. I will move to the graph workbench and I will apply my move command. But first I will make sure that uh, the midpoint snap mode is deselected and I will choose center of circles as snap mode. Okay, so having the cylinder selected, I apply my move command. I click on the circle here and I click on the circle here to have the rod centered in its hole and be, li uh, be like this. That's okay. So the next thing is that we will rename the cylinder to rod and we select the rod and we do our clone and either we can do our movement again or we also could have applied a placement to the clone by if you remember correctly from our sketch we did 270 millimeters in x direction so if we toggle the visibility of all the solids switch to axisymmetric view we only have to change uh, the appearance of all the solids except for the two rods so let's change the appearance to something which looks at least a little bit like wood so this is our uh, base body and now we will uh, talk about editing and creating groups because we want to sort our solids within FreeCAD here and FreeCAD gives us a possibility to create groups within the tree view. So we do a right click here and we say create group and then we can do a multi selection of all those solids and click on one of the selected solids and if there appears a small cross 
we can drag and drop all those solids within this group. Of course, we can also rename the group. In this case, I will rename the group to base. And now let's move on with uh, the body and the roof. Okay, so let's first select all the solids and toggle the visibility. Let's then switch to part design workbench, inserting a sketch on the XZ plane once more. We will use a polyline tool, applying a horizontal line here, a line here, going back to the origin. Okay. So, first thing we will do is applying a symmetry to this basic uh, horizontal line here and the origin. Okay. Now we will fix this point lying on the z axis with this constraint here. We will apply equality to these two lines and we will apply equality to these two lines. We will apply a horizontal dimension of 100 mm to this line. We will apply a horizontal dimension to these two points of 200 mm. We will apply a vertical dimension here to 170 mm. And we will drag this point a little bit upwards and apply here to this line a vertical dimension of 100 mm. So if you have a look, this is 100 mm, this is 100 mm, so this angle here is 45 degrees and this angle here is 90 degrees. Let's close our sketch and let's do our padding of 18 millimeters symmetric to plane. Okay. So let's get back to our model. Let's toggle the visibility of the base plate. And let's toggle the, visib the visibility of this sketch 001 here. Let's select the sketch. Let's go to the draft workbench. And let's make sure that the midpoints option is selected. And in my case now uh, the concentric uh, option is deselected. And let's use the move command. The midpoint of this sketch line here should be on the midpoint here, the, mi mi the midpoint of this corner here. So we now want to apply an incremental translational change to this sketch here and it should be in y direction 9 millimeters so that the finished object will look like this. We click on OK. We rename the pad to uh, front wall. OK. And now we will do a clone of the front wall. And remember, with the clone, we don't have any restrictions regarding the move 
or rotate command. So I can make sure that the clone is selected. I apply a move command to the midpoint. Let's switch to wireframe mode to the midpoint here to be identical with the midpoint here. And that's it. Now we have just created these two walls. Okay, since we want the roof to be very strong in case of any wind, we will switch back to the part workbench and insert a cube. We will select the cube and change its properties to be of a length of 40 millimeters, a width of 40 millimeters, and no, I am wrong, the width is 260 millimeters minus 36, so it's the difference, uh, or the, 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 uh, the distance between this face and this face. And let's use an 8 of 40 millimeters. Okay, so let's apply a placement, an incremental one. We want to do a rotation around the y axis of minus, no, of, of plus 45 degrees. Okay. So the cube is still selected, so we switch back to a draft workbench. We deselect the midpoint option from the snap modes and we will choose the endpoints. We will choose the move command and we will choose this endpoint here to be identical with this endpoint here. And now we just made the roof a little bit stronger. So now we will rename this cube to reinforcement. We will toggle the visibility of this sketch here to invisible. We will select all these three solids, correct the appearance to be something bronze-like. Oh no. We did choose brass, right? Yes. That's our wood color. <laughs> and now we will create a new group. We will rename the group to be body. We will choose all these solids and move them to the body group. And so we will continue with the roof. For the roof, we will now toggle the visibility of these solids to invisible. Also the base plate we will toggle invisible. And we will switch back to the part workbench and insert a cube. The cube will have properties of length being 182 millimeters, the width being 320 millimeters and the eighth being 18 millimeters. Now we will select the cube, we will switch to the draft workbench 
and apply the move command with endpoint snapping being turned on. Okay, so we will apply the move command. We will, we will make sure that this corner here is identical with this corner here. So the next thing is that we want to do a rotation. So we select this front face here. We click on uh, the button to, to set a working plane to this face here. We will do a rotate operation with this solid here. The center of rotation is this point here. And we will rotate this point to be identical with this endpoint here. Since we set the working plane to this here, snapping to this endpoint will align also these two edges to each other. So this is uh, our left half of our roof. Now let's continue with the right half of our roof by inserting the next cube. So we switch to the part workbench. We will insert a cube. We will select the cube and we will change its uh, properties. We will change the length to 200 millimeters, the width to 320 millimeters and the 8 of 18 millimeters. Okay, we will rename the first cube to roof left and the second cube we will rename to roof right. Okay, so let's do our moving by selecting the roof right. We will switch to the draft workbench. We will do our moving with endpoints being, uh, being um, selected. So the move command is applied. This corner here should be identical with this corner here. Okay. Let's switch back to automatic mode with the work plane and let's select this face here and set the working plane to this face here. Okay, now let's do a rotation with the roof right. So select, make sure uh, the solid is selected and do a rotation. This is the center of our rotation. And here with here. Okay, so now there is something which is not to our liking. If we toggle the visibility of a back wall, we will see that the roof is not centered in Y direction. So Let's have a quick look with a part workbench, doing a measurement of these two faces. The distance is 60 millimeters, so we have to apply um, a correctional distance of 30 millimeter in minus y direction. Okay, we will say clear all. We will close this dialog here. We will select the roof left and the roof right. And we will apply a placement to both and we will apply an incremental change in Y direction of minus 30 millimeters. As you could see here, the roof did just move in the correct direction. I will apply OK and we have a correct roof applied here. So let's toggle the visibility of the front 
wall and the back wall to make them invisible and let's continue with the outer reinforcement of our roof. Okay, so let's do the last part of our bird feeder, switching to the part design workbench, inserting a sketch, a new one on the XZ plane. Now using the polyline tool, we will draw something like an L shape sketch. Now we will need here a horizontal line and we will go back to the origin. We will apply equality to these two lines here and we will apply equality to these two lines here. Okay, so we will apply now a horizontal dimensional constraint of 40 millimeters to this line here and we will apply a vertical dimensional constraint of 4 millimeter to this line here. We will close the sketch. We will make sure that the sketch is selected and we will apply a placement. We will do an incremental change. The center of rotation is the origin, 0, 0, 0, that's ok. So we will choose the y axis and we will choose minus 100, no, it is plus 135 degrees. So the shape should look like this. We click on apply and OK. And then we will do our padding with the sketch. We will choose a pad length of 320 millimeters. And as you could see here, the direction of padding is wrong. So we click on here, uh, this tick box reversed. Choose OK. We will rename we sell it to, let's call it top cap. I have to admit I'm not a native English speaker, so excuse me if I'm using uh, wrong words. And I'm also not an architect, so excuse me twice. <laughs> and uh, now we will toggle the visibility of this sketch here by either doing a right click here and say toggle visibility or using the space bar. So we will select the sketch, we will enter the draft workbench, we will use our move command, uh, we will make sure that the endpoint snapping is turned on and we will move the endpoint of this sketch here to the endpoint here. And that's it. So, finally, let's uh, select these two roofs and change the appearance to our wood color. Let's toggle the visibility of this sketch to invisible. Let's create a group. Let's select the group do a right click and do a renaming of the group to roof. Let's select all these solids and drag and drop them in the roof group. So let's also toggle the visibility of all the solids in the body group and let's toggle the visibility of all the solids in the base group. And as you can see here, we have finished our bird feeder by practicing placement, move and rotate commands. So remember the trick we did use when uh, we did a clone of for example a part design 
object. So that uh, we should not have any restrictions when moving or rotating the solid. Well, since as of now we don't have an official assembly workbench, meaning an assembly workbench programmed and maintained by the core programmers, um, I used some tricks to do an assembly in FreeCAD. Either I did model everything in place within part design, or I used move and rotate on clones, or I did model uh, the parts within uh, part design, for example, and did some simple copies. So when switching to the part design workbench and selecting, for example, this front plate, you are able to do with from the top menu part create simple copy you will get here just a simple solid with no history in FreeCAD and with this simple solid you are able to do movement and rotation with the draft workbench tools just to your liking you can also apply colors and things like that. You just do not have this link to a history. So for example, with this chess um, assembly, which you can have a look at uh, my account on GrabCut, the link is in the description of the video. As you can see, I did model all the pieces here within part design workbench and then I did simple copies to be able to place them on the board. I also did use another trick because in this case I created a sketch containing these circles. They are all constrained, so it was a lot of work. And the idea was that if you now are in wireframe mode, every uh, chess piece has a round shape as its base. So I can, for example, select from the white pieces here this one it's a white tower and when doing snapping mode as center of circles I would be able to do a move command with the center of the circle here to the center of the circle here so using a sketch on a face to be able to position something in 3D space is an acceptable workaround. So with this being said, we reached the end of today's episode. I hope I did uh, show something useful and you learned something. And uh, well, as usual, you can leave comments, suggestions or questions on the YouTube channel here. And uh, don't forget to have fun with FreeCAD and, well, maybe see you in another video. Bye!